Hi there, welcome to the video. We'll be building a counter application with MobX. So that's a state management pattern slash library for Dart and Flutter. So we'll be building upon this counter that we see here. When we click the button, of course, it will go up. We'll also give us the ability to go down, so we'll decrement that number. So our journey starts off in pubspec.yaml. So let's head over to that file and we'll need to install the following. So inside of dependencies, we'll need mobx and we'll also need flutter underscore mobx. So when we leave this empty sort of after this colon here, this means that we'll take the latest version. We'll also need to go down to the dev dependencies and we'll need the following. We'll need build runner and finally we'll need mobx code gen. At this stage inside of VS Code, we can hit Command S to save, or alternatively, we can run flutter packages get, and this will of course install all of the packages inside of our flutter project. Next up, we'll head over to main.dart, and inside of main.dart, we'll remove everything below the void main, and then we'll make our new class of my app, which extends the stateless widget, We'll then, of course, override the build methods. And inside of here, we'll return a new material app. And that material app will have a home page equal to a counter page. Now, of course, we haven't created that counter page yet. So let's head over to library. We'll make a new folder called pages. And then inside of pages, we'll have a counter underscore page dot dot. And that counter page is just simply a stateless widget. So we need to have a class called counter page, which extends the stateless widget. And then once again, we'll have the missing overrides, which will be the build function. And we'll build out a new scaffold. And a scaffold allows us to have an app bar. And that app bar can have an app bar with the title text equal to Flutter and MobX. So we'll need to, of course, import material, not Cupertino for that. And then after the app bar, we can have a body and the body will simply have a centered column. The children of the column will simply be a text which says counter. We'll then have the value of the count. So for now, we'll just put zero. And then we want a row. Inside of the row, we'll have children equal to flat button dot icon. The first icon will be icons. We'll take the icons dot add. That will give us the ability to have a plus button with the label of text equal to add. And for now, we'll just put an empty on pressed. Next up, we need another flat button, but this time we'll have a minus. So this will be the icons of icons dot remove. And we'll give it the label of minus. And then if we go back to main dot dart and we import this counter page. And that comes, of course, from our pages, counter page dot dot. And then inside of our counter page, we give the column, the main axis alignment of main axis alignment dot center. And the row will give the main axis alignment equal to the same centered alignment. Finally, the only thing I want to do at this point is to increase the text size. So we'll give the style of text a style font size 30. That increases the size of our counter. We'll copy that to add it in various other places. For example, we'll make the size of the zero to be 42. So it's bigger than the counter text. And now we need to hook up the functionality to when we click the buttons, add or minus, it should increase this count as we see here. 
So that's done, of course, with our store. So let's make a folder inside of library called store. As we'd most likely want multiple items inside of the store, we'll have a new folder called counter. And then we want a counter.dart. Inside of counter.dart, we'll start off by importing the package mobx slash mobx.dart. That will give us access to mobx. And then we can create an abstract class called counter with store. And we can define a variable, which would be an observable. And that will be int count. And we can set that equal to zero. So this here is an observable value inside of our store. Anytime this changes, we'll be able to subscribe to that. And then we want another action. So you'll notice we are using these decorators with the at sign. So the action will be a void and it will increment and we'll say count plus plus. And finally, we'll have another action with a void called decrement and that will be count minus minus. So we're nearly there. We have to do a couple of other things. And what we need to do now is we need to start the generator. So MobX provides us with this code gen and that makes it much easier because we don't have to write a lot of the generated code ourselves. And that's done by running flutter packages pub run build underscore runner and we want to watch on that. So now that we have the build runner watching, anytime that we create something with the store, we'll want to include the generated file. So let's include the part counter dot g dot dart. And finally, we want to expose a counter to the rest of our app that we can use. And that will be the class of counter equaling our underscore counter with the underscore dollar counter. And that's going to be part of the generated code. So if we look at the counter dot g dot dart, we can see that we have this mix in here. That is essentially that dollar counter. And that contains a lot of the MobX code that determines when things are changed, as well as actions and much more. So that makes it so that our counter code right here is super simple and all of the generated code we can simply just include with this part. So now that we have that, all we need to do now is to go back to our counter page. And inside of the counter page itself, instead of using text here, we want to wrap that with a new widget and we want the observer widget. Now this doesn't come by default, so we will have to import that. So we'll need to come to the top and we want to import Flutter MobX like that. And this observer now gives us access to, instead of the child, we want the builder. And then we can use the builder to render the text on change. So now that we have this observer and we have the builder, which gives us the text, anytime the value of the counter changes, we want to update that on screen. Firstly, make sure that we import the counter by coming to the top and saying package. And instead we want the project name slash store slash counter slash counter dot dart. Then up at the top inside of our counter page, we can have a final type counter. Counter is equal to an instance of that counter state. Then we can come down to the observer. And inside of the builder, we can bind to the value of our counter. So this is quite similar to JavaScript. And that's done by having the dollar. And then we have these two braces. We can then say counter dot. And as you can see, we get access to the count. Finally, if we come down to our row, we have an unpressed, and that unpressed can be used to say counter dot increment. And finally, for the minus, we can have a counter dot decrement. Now, if we save, we can have a look at our Flutter and MobX project, and we can hit add, and we should be able to see the value go up, and finally, see the value go down. So that's how we've created a 
observable store using Flutter and MobX. We've got an observable value here of count. We have some actions that we can use. And then of course, inside of our counter page, we're using an observer to listen to the value of the count, as well as use onPressed to fire those actions. So thanks a lot for watching. I hope you found this useful. If you have, let me know inside of the comments. And of course, hit the subscribe button. Until the next video, I'll see you then.